In this tutorial, I will be covering how to use countdown timers to repeat a task every couple of seconds and receive how much time has passed since we started the timer. So here's a demonstration where we have a toast displaying the time and it's counting down from 5 seconds. Once it reaches 0, it says done counting. And that's what we will be doing in this tutorial. But first, if you haven't already, make sure to join the IG Apps Discord that way you can communicate with fellow Android app developers and ask questions. Do it by scanning the QR code on the screen. We're going to be creating the countdown timer in our main activity.java and to create it, all you have to say is new countdown timer and I will create the object. You can see it's underlined in red because the countdown timer is an abstract class and we have to implement its methods. And it has two methods, on tick and on finish. And I'll explain what those are in a second. I'll put a semicolon here. So inside for the parameters of the countdown timer, we have to provide the release in the future, which is how long we want our countdown timer to run. So if we want it to run for five seconds, we're going to specify 5,000 milliseconds. We also have to specify the countdown interval, which is how frequently this on tick method over here will be triggered. So if I specify 1,000, which 1,000 milliseconds, which is one second, our on tick method over here will be called every second for five seconds. And on finish will be called once the countdown timer has finished. So after five seconds. So now all we have to do is just make our toast. I'm going to create a global toast object and call it T. And I'm going to check if T is not equal to null, then I'm going to cancel it because I only want to display the latest toast. I don't want there to be a delay. And you can check out my video on that for more information. But now I'm going to say t equals toast dot make text get application context. For the message to display, I'm going to display how much time is left. So that's going to be L or milliseconds divided by a thousand. So the on tick method also provides us with this long that tells us how much time has passed. And because it requires a string, I'll just concatenate an empty string to it. The last parameter is toast.length short. Finally, to show the toast, I'm just going to have to say t.show. So this will be called every second and display how much time has passed, or uh, sorry, how much time is left. And I'll just copy this code over here and paste it in my onFinish method. And this is basically after the 5,000 milliseconds or 5 seconds are up. So I'll display over here countdown complete. And to run this, we simply have to say dot start after our countdown timer. So this is the important part to actually start our countdown timer object. We're going to have to add the dot start method and now we can run the app. So when I launch the app, you can see that it indeed does start a countdown timer and it makes a toast at the bottom displaying the amount of time left and then it displays countdown complete. You may have noticed it started at four instead of five seconds. We can quickly fix that just by printing this around parentheses and adding one because this is the number of seconds and we're just adding one to it. So instead of starting at four, it'll start at five and go on to one until it says countdown complete. Countdown timers are really useful and one of the most obvious applications is an alarm app so that when the on finish method is triggered, you can cause your app to make vibrations that way the user is notified that their alarm is up. In the next tutorial, I will show you how to use countdown timers to automatically dismiss an alert dialog after a specified amount of time like so. So if the user doesn't interact with the dialog, it will automatically close by itself. Until then, happy developing from IJ Apps.